In this episode of the Clean Code Review, I want to focus on separation of concerns and so improve readability and changeability of the code for the benefit of our teammates and the future version of us. Here is the code I want to review. The exception parser gets an exception text and creates a data structure. The test class invariant comparer takes two instances of these data structures and decides whether both refer to the same error independent of a particular test class. You might already be familiar with this code because this is exactly the same project we have reviewed in the previous episode. One aspect we left open for further improvement is the usage of regular expressions in the comparer class. Such an implementation may hurt performance if we have to compare the same data structures over and over again. And we could also argue that extracting information out of text using regular expressions is clearly the responsibility of a parser. So let's see how we can improve this code by clearly separating the parsing code from the decision making code. But before doing any refactoring, we want to review the test safety net and check whether it is complete. This also helps us to learn more about the intention of the code we are going to refactor. As we reviewed these tests already in the previous episode, we can skip this step now. When planning to add new code to an existing file, it is a good habit to first check for any code cleanups we could do upfront. For this code we see a few suggestions by the IDE, so let's apply the proposed fixes. There's one more suggestion by the IDE, but in this case I prefer to keep this method an instance method. And if we scroll down, we see a few more suggestions by the IDE. So let's apply the fixes here as well. There's one more cleanup we can apply. Let's follow the single level of abstraction principle and factor out the details from this method into separate methods. First let's extract the parsing of the text into multiple lines into a separate method. And for this we use the refactoring tools of the IDE. Let's rename the method and change this to var. Splitting the first line into exception type and exception method is another detail we can extract. So let's use again the tool of the IDE, extract method and rename the method. I do not like out parameters, so let's refactor this method into a method which returns a tuple. Ok, let's run the tests and submit the improvements. Remember, the tests are based on a test API, which encapsulates the exception parser as well as the comparer class, so we can easily refactor both classes, including the API surface, without impacting our tests. Now we are ready for the first real refactoring step. We create a new data structure called stack trace line. It takes a string which holds the actual value and a bool which indicates whether this particular stack trace line is from a test class. We use this new data structure in the exception info. Now we can move the method is stack trace line from test class from the comparer class into the parser. Now let's change the exception parser to return stack trace line objects instead of strings. In the comparer class, we can now simply use the isTestClass property from the stack trace line record. Now the comparer class is free from any text parsing. Let's run the test cases and submit the changes. Let's have a second look at the code. What we see is that the parser cuts off the parameters of a method call and the regular expressions actually extract and compare the namespace and the class name. With the current design, the decision how to detect the test class is in the exception parser. But isn't that decision making? Let's continue with the refactoring and separate the parsing logic and the decision making even further. We start by adding properties for the namespace the class name, the method name and the method parameters to the stack trace line record we have added earlier. Now we extract the creation of a stack trace line object into a separate method and add the parsing logic.
This code for parsing a stack trace line into namespace, class name, method, and parameters might not be perfect, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I think it's good enough. And to prove this, let's add some new test cases specifically for parsing a stack trace line. Let's add a new test API so that we do not expose too much details about our internal design. With this implementation, we expose the stack trace line object to the test, a decision we should revisit later on, as we have discussed in this video. For the purpose of this tutorial, let's accept the possible disadvantages and move on with the test. Let's add two simple test cases one for parsing a stack trace line with a method with parameters and one without parameters. Now let's run the new test cases and see whether the implementation works. Okay, a stupid copy and paste error. Let's fix this. And now run the test again. Okay, green. Great. We also see some cleanup suggestions by the IDE. Let's check those and apply the fixes. And let's do the same here as well. And finally submit the changes. Now we can go back to the exception parser and continue with the refactoring. The logic to decide whether a particular class is a test class or not is actually independent from a particular comparer. So let's move this decision into the stack trace line object itself. And as namespace and class name are already extracted from the stack trace line value, we can easily implement this method without any regular expressions. Let's run the tests and submit the changes. At this point we have clearly separated all the parsing logic from any decision-making logic. But if we check our test cases again, we realize that we can improve the design to make it even more explicit. If we look at one particular stack trace, we see that there are of course not only test classes. We also see test abstractions and of course we also see product code. How could we reflect these types of stack trace lines in our design? A first simple approach could be to just add more methods like is test abstraction or is product code. But such a design is actually not very explicit because these different APIs would actually be mutable exclusive. To reflect that explicitly in the design, we could choose an enum. As we have changed the API of the stack trace line class, we also have to adapt the comparer. Let's run the test cases and submit the changes. But what happens if we have to extend the enum definition later on? Imagine a stack trace like this. Here we do not only see the test class, test abstractions and product code, we also see stack trace lines from the infrastructure like the nUnit runner or the .NET framework itself. If we want to reflect these cases in our enum as well, we would have to change it and add one more case like infrastructure or other or unknown. But such a change we would have to consider as a breaking change because existing code may throw a not supported exception for any enum case which is not known to this code. So we would have to find all the code which is using the AP type enum, review the code and handle the new case we have added explicitly. This might be a bit challenging if the code base is big. To address this risk of accidentally breaking existing code, 
we could change our design again and use a concept from functional programming which is based on union types and pattern matching. As c -sharp doesn't support any union types yet, we simulate those using inheritance. And as the c -sharp pattern matching is not yet strong enough, we encapsulate it in this specific SELECT API. If you now want to know how exactly this design approach works and wonder how it helps with such kind of breaking changes, then watch the video shown in a second. And with this, we are done with this episode of Clean Code Review. We have seen that we can improve the understandability and changeability of a design by clearly separating the concerns of parsing data and decision making. As a positive side effect, this separation also made it easier to test the parser code explicitly. See you in the next episode.